Okay. I, uh, this is uh, going to be part three of differences with Catholics. So I want to mention Protestants too. I feel like I'm, when I say differences with Catholics, it's a, uh, it's almost like I'm attack. I have no attack for them. Uh, remember, for the first thousand years of the church, there was only one church. So, did they have uh, a common ancestry with us too? Uh, also, I noticed I went back and looked at my video just to see where I had left off, and I realized I was shaking a lot. I'm like, man, I don't want to do that to my viewers, piss people off, because it's uh, you know really shaking. Um, so I set it up on a different table, so I'm a little farther away from it, as you might know or notice. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to continue on this idea, or these these ideas, these main ideas. Now, if you see that there's no no structure to the church, as the Roman Catholic Church, it's kind of everything happens, you know, organically, um, and <coughs> the the fact that the whole operation of the church is only to maintain what has been given to you beforehand, uh, which is basically the, the functional part of it. Uh, but you have to realize why this is. Now, I'll get to theosis and um, our idea of the afterlife more, but I just want, first want to impress upon you the idea of Imagine if you believed heaven itself. The total realm of heaven in its truest nature came down and was embodied in a human being born like us. That would have to be the strangest event in the world. You'd have to look at that and be like, that's odd. That's stranger than space aliens or time travel. Or even somebody from another dimension coming to ours. I mean, it's, it's, it's as odd as the Big Bang, or even more so. Um, if this happening occurred, and as you can read, and if you read the Gospels, there's a very strange thing that happens. And, you know, this Protestant way, the Master is very strange. Um, which is a TV show by Kirk Cameron and Ray Comfort, where they say, you know, this is how Jesus did things. You, you need to bring people to realize that they're sinful and then offer them salvation in Christ, and, nah, 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 and that's how you do it. And that's how Jesus... No. If you read the Gospels, uh, you see people, Gentiles, crowds, people coming in by night, people wanting to be by him, but having fear, you know, oh, I'm too sinful, people, yeah, sick people just wanting to touch him. And in the Gospel of Mark, the most primitive and the oldest one, and the most, in my view, the most accurate, you know, a woman touches him and says, it's pow he felt his power go out, and reach him, who touched me, and he got angry, and felt, say, you know, it's get this really person touched you. I mean, this is how people would react if somebody who was heaven incarnate people from around are just coming seeing what is this you know it would fr it would frustrate the whole superstructure of uh of reality and of all the governments and everything and this is what exactly what we see in the bible is just people just you know running to them which was which is the i guess i'd say the desired effect you know you, i mean that's what hopefully we all run to them like that uh, but that's the church only wanted to preserve that that part of it, what the apostles had taught them how to do, and it just moved on from there. There was no adding on, or that's why the Catholic Church is really the first Protestant church because when they broke from uh, the Orthodox Church, they started. You you notice that they don't have seven councils; they have like something like twenty-one, and you have to realize that. That's a very strange thing. For the first thousand years, there was only eight councils. And then the next thousand years, that grows to 21. There's a, what is it, 16 councils within the thousand? That's, that's a lot. The Lateran councils, the this, the that, the uh, Vatican councils. 
really ridiculous things because they keep adding and improving and how can you know and the Vatican councils were a response to Protestantism the second one how can we be more let's strip everything down it no the whole point was to preserve you know people ask why is it done why aren't there female priests have there ever been female priests no well we're not going to add anything it's not it's not an organization that you know, can sits me, oh, how can we make this better? How can we improve? No, we're just, we're only doing what's done before. And there's even processes that got, they would wave a sheet up and down uh, the, uh, where the communion bread and wine was. And that was primarily uh, to keep the flies away. Now there's a whole theology to that. Of it's, you know, the, 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 uh, the spirit hovering over it like it hovers over the waters. So even the things that um, were added in, I wouldn't say accidentally, but you know, incidentally, now have theology to them, which is it's a very mystical idea. You know, we don't laugh and say, "Oh, is I mean, our icons are is the same iconography of ancient Rome. Why do angels have wings? Well, it's because the messenger gods like Mercury uh, in Roman. Uh, in Roman iconography, that's how they were depicted. It was a way to show it to the people, and now we still have that. I mean, a lot of the the Virgin with Child, that that icon is very very similar to uh, Isis with Child. It's not it's not a we're we're not using the pagan imagery, but a lot of the style. Just as if you invented a religion today, it would have that same style. Dianetics. It has a very fifties look of look at the world because it was in it started in the fifties. So that has that is a big difference on the difference of, of how the outward religiosity of it is. Now, if you have a starting point of no original sin, people aren't born personally guilty as they are in the West. Um, you know, because they and that the incarnation is the most important point. These Western Christians, especially the Protestants, have this idea that they're when Christ was going to the cross, they were cheering him on, like, yeah, we're sins going to get paid for, you know. Whenever I heard that story, I became very angry, you know. I'm like, if I was there, I'd take a gun, kill all those, or I'm take them off the cross. Because a, a real death is happening here. You know, they act like it's some story, and ah, I wonder if they take it for real. You know, I just want I just wanted to mention a little bit. Now, if you believe that God became man so that we may become God, you believe heaven and hell are the same place. You have no original sin. Just from those starting points, everything, the outlook of the world, is going to be drastically different. That's why people may say, and I don't even understand when people say, oh, well, Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy look the same. It, I mean, maybe in some Greek churches where they've toned it down a lot and tried to become Americanized. But if you actually go into an old style church, nothing's the same. There's a theology, or I guess an interpretation that started in the West that says the, the, the uh, thing is, uh, I tell you, uh, um, it would be easier for, the, for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get out. It's a parable, it's a saying by Christ. And they they came up with this idea. Oh well, the eye of a needle was this was this curved thing with a big hole in it, and you lashed your mules or whatever to it or your camels, and the only way I could get through it was on its knees. No, that's not what it, that's not what it is. That's people trying to make waves so they can have these millions of dollars and see everybody in poverty and say, oh, but I'm prayerful. I'm it's you know. Since I'm so humble, I can have all the, I can live in obnoxious luxury while others suffer, and I don't have to eat fast or do anything like that. I, since I'm enlightened, I can be rich and greedy. No. Uh, many people take that as, as it would be easier for a camel to or go through the eye of a needle than for a rich men to give it to heaven. That camels can't go through eyes of needles, and people who live like that can't get to heaven. Well, in the Aramaic, in the Syriac text, it says a rope. It would be easier for a rope to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get to heaven. 
Now, that doesn't have a hell of a lot of, the that doesn't have any theological difference from those who say, no, camels can't th go through eyes of needles. But it really puts a kibosh on the idea of these Protestants with this health and wealth prosperity gospel. It just, it shuts them down. And there's, it, it really brings it home, and that's the orthodox understanding of it, because the uh, the word for, for camel and rope were just a, the, a line, so there was a mistranslation there. It didn't change the meaning, uh, but it turns out that the Protestants forced a change, and now there can be no debate about it because we actually have the real word that's supposed to be there, which is rope and not camel. And the uh, <coughs> how much would you change a Protestant or a um, Roman Catholic if you said there's no original sin? Uh, at least, at least the first ten chapters were of the Book of Genesis were got were prophecy and parable and not literal. Uh, that heaven and hell are the same place, and that actually, and I don't think I've touched on this. We don't have a view, view that the majority of people are going to have to hell. They're probably going to heaven. We can't speak on it, but many of the church fathers see a, uh, sorry, those are my dogs barking, if you can hear them, that uh, the majority of mankind will reach paradise, will meet Christ at some point. Uh, and then some of the some of the church fathers actually had an idea of universalism, that everyone will eventually get saved, that you may spend some period of time in a form of purgatory, but that eventually the light would come to you and you would, you know, you would realize and from that hell you gain knowledge into heaven because the idea of useless suffering, a God making people useless, use, uh, uselessly suffer is ridiculous. And there's an apocalypse of St. Peter that the Ethiopian Orthodox use where it has all these graphic depictions of hell and homosexuals being this, and, it, and you know, fornicators will be hung by this, and mud, and, and all the horrible descriptions of people. And St. Peter yell, goes to God, how can you allow all this pain and suffering and be good? How can this go on for eternity? And Christ whispers to him, shh, everybody will get out of hell eventually, but don't tell anybody or else they'll, you know, or else they'll act wickedly. <clears throat> now, of course, my church doesn't accept this. We see this as kind of a foolish thing, you know. This is somewhat, this is Gnostic, the idea that he pulled somebody aside and told special secret things to and didn't reveal it to the whole church. Then you would actually have a real precedent for a pope. You'd have some secrecy up there around, you know, Vatican Hill, and then there would be, uh, then they'd be the ruling ones telling you, you know, no, that's not how we view things. But the drastic impact that these uh, basic fundamental ideas have, uh, your outlook on the way you treat other people, on the way you view your fellow man, on the way you view yourself, and on why you're going to change and how you're going to be a better person, are drastic. They may not seem like that if you're just saying, oh, this and that. I mean, if there are side notes of like, Oh, we do our communion with the bread and wine mix, where they do theirs, just the communion way, where they have intention, or we have concomitants, or we have, it's, you know. No. I mean, those things are peripheral. But the core things, it makes a drastic difference. And I had just got, I just started talking in this video. I haven't even gotten to my main points yet, and it's already 14 minutes. Oh my god, I'm going to have to make another one of these, because ju just when I get started, it, it, you know, it's already uh, 14 minutes and 15 seconds now. Alright, peace, I'm going to make I'm gonna make the fourth one right after this. So, just wait about a half hour, it'll be up. I have no attack for them. Uh, remember, for the first thousand years of the church, there was only one church, so they have uh, a common ancestry with us, too. Uh, also, I noticed I went back and looked at my video just to see where I had left off, and I realized it was shaking a lot. I'm like, man, the, uh, the fact that the whole operation of the church is only to maintain what has been given to you beforehand, uh, which is basically the, the functional part of it. Yeah. Or these, these ideas, these main ideas. 
Now, if you see that there's no no structure to the church, as the Roman Catholic Church, it's kind of everything happens, you know, organically. Um, and <coughs> I don't want to do that to my viewers, piss people off, because it's uh, you know really shaking. Um, so I set it up on a different table, so I'm a little farther away from it, as you might know or notice. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to continue on this idea. Okay, I uh, this is uh, going to be part three of differences with Catholics. So I want to mention Protestants too. I feel like I'm when I say differences with Catholics, it's a uh, it's almost like I'm attacking.